Hi, and welcome to Jamie DeRoy and Friends. Well, the Broadway season is officially at its end because we just celebrated the Tony Awards. And the biggest winner, no surprise, was Hamilton. It won 11 Tony Awards. Now, that's not quite the record. The record is 12 for the producers. They would have had to have a tie to make 12 or more because there were multiple nominations in a few of the categories. But wow, congratulations to Hamilton. So the first award they won, well, the biggest award they won was Musical of the Year. Lin-Manuel Miranda won two Tony Awards for Best Book of a Musical and Best Original Score. Leading actor in a musical went to Leslie Odom Jr. and featured actor in a musical went to David Diggs. Best Featured Actress in a Musical went to Renee Elise Goldsberry. Best Costume Design of a Musical, Paul Tazewell. Best Lighting Design, Howell Binkley. Best Direction, Thomas Kale. Choreography to Andy Blankenbuehler and Best Orchestrations to Alex Lacamoire. I'm past patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action's an act of creation. I'm laughing in the face of casualties of sorrow. For the first time I'm thinking past tomorrow. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Maybe I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. The Humans by Stephen Karam won four Tony Awards, including Best Play, Best Featured Actress in a Play, Jane Hudichel, Best Featured Actor, Reed Burney, and Best Scenic Design, David Zinn. I can't believe people want to watch that kind of stuff at night. When there's <laughs> oh, anything with blood or gore. Yeah, well, there's enough going on in the real world to give me the creeps. That's huh? like, I bet she'd appreciate, there, there's this comic book called Quasar, I was obsessed with it when I was a kid. You're it's about, still obsessed with quasar. Yes, you I am. Don't throw them out. Pretty quiet. It's about this species of like half alien, <laughs> half demon creatures with teeth on their backs. Oh my but on god! Their planet, it's all the monsters. On their planet, the scary stories they tell each other—they're all about us. The horror stories for the monsters are all about humans. I love yeah. That. Well, Pete Lark, you should meet my boss. No teeth on his back. <laughs> <laughs> It's always a man driving the stake through the heart of the vampire. Or if you're a zombie, you eat people, but your biggest threat is what? Getting killed by some enterprising human. I get right? it, Rich. They'd be more scared by monster eating monsters or something, am I right? Monsters aren't real, so it's a weird thing to want to be right about. Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge won two Tony Awards for Best Revival of a Play and Best Direction of a Play, Ivo Van Hova. The Color Purple won two Tony Awards for Best Revival of a Musical and for its star, Cynthia Erivo. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Gonna hold my head up. Gonna put my shoulders back and look you straight in the eye. I'm gonna fly.
Best leading actor in a play went to Frank Langella for The Father. It's been going on for some time. Strange things going on around me. Haven't you noticed? There was this man claiming this wasn't my flat, a very unsympathetic looking man. A bit like your husband, only worse. You understand what I'm saying? In my flat, he told me. You understand? It really takes the cake. He told me that this wasn't my flat, but this is my flat, isn't it? This is my flat, isn't it? Tell me, Anne. This really is my flat, isn't it? Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey Into Night won two Tony Awards for its leading actress, Jessica Lange, and lighting design to Natasha Katz. It's a special kind of medicine, Kathleen. I have to take it. Because there is no other that kills the pain. All the pain. In my hands, I mean. <laughs> Poor hands. You'd never believe it, but they were once one of my good points. Along with my hair <laughs> and my eyes. Oh, I, I had a fine figure, too. <laughs> they were a musician's hand. Oh, I used to love the piano. I've worked so hard at my music in the convent. I mean, if you can call it work when you're doing something that you love. Mother Elizabeth, Mother Elizabeth and my music teacher, they both said, oh, that I had more talent than any student they remembered. <laughs> my father paid for special lessons. Oh, he spoiled me dreadfully, I'm afraid. He would have sent me to Europe to study after I graduated from the convent. And I, I, I might have gone if I hadn't fallen in love with Mr. Tyrone. The Tony Award for Best Costume Design of a Play went to Clint Ramos. For Eclipsed. The Tony Award for Best Scenic Design went to David Rockwell for She Loves Me. It's his first Tony Award and he was thrilled. I'm trembling. What the hell does that mean? I'm freezing. That's because it's cold out. And still I'm incandescent. And like some adolescents, I'd like to scrawl on every wall I see. She loves me. She loves me. Recently, a plethora of theater books have been published. Among them are John Breglio's I Want to Be a Producer, How to Make a Killing on Broadway or Get Killed. John Breglio has been an entertainment lawyer for the past 40 years. I kind of wish he'd have written this book a little sooner when I started producing. Michael Riedel, who writes for the New York Post and hosts Theater Talk, has written a fascinating book entitled Razzle Dazzle. Once you pick it up, you can't put it down. David Kaufman has written a biography on Mary Martin, who's got a fascinating life. You probably know her from the original production of South Pacific, and she was the original Peter Pan. The book is Some Enchanted Evenings, The Glittering Life and Times of Mary Martin, covers one of the most fascinating careers 
in Broadway history. Recently, I had the pleasure of going to the Children's Benefit Gala. It celebrated 25 years of education through music. It was hosted by Christine Baranski with special guests Joshua Bell and Chris Bodie. At the event, they played a wonderful little promo where they interviewed some of the kids that had gone through this program. It was the most enlightening and inspiring evening I've spent recently. Here is that video. And now for, I think, probably the most special moment of the evening, we have two young ladies who performed here tonight, Edna and Michelle Okang, want to come up and speak a little bit about what ETM means to them. Good evening. My name is Michelle O'Kang, and this is my sister Edna O'Kang. We are standing in front of you today because music has given our family a new take on life. It was a challenge when my sister and I first joined orchestra in elementary school. We had to carry our instruments on trains and buses from our temporary residence in Manhattan as early as 4 a.m. in order to be in the Bronx for our 6 a.m. orchestra rehearsal. Most nights, we only slept for three hours. Challenging as it seemed, we felt very privileged to be a part of the orchestra. It was a blessing to our family at a time when our family fell apart. Learning new songs with my sister and playing for the pleasure of our mother bonded our new tribe. Being an orchestra gave us hope in the present and hope for the future. Although it was demanding, I couldn't wait to start practicing because music took me to another dimension. All of my troubles and worries seemed to melt away. Our mother was thrilled that we became so passionate about our music. She became so engrossed in our practicing that despite her desperate need for sleep before her night shift, she would stay awake watching us. It seems like just yesterday when Miss Pottinger taught me how to play Amazing Grace on my violin. I went home very excited and immediately played it for my mom. When I finished, I noticed tears in her eyes. I said, I know I'm bad, but you don't have to cry about it. <laughs> to which she replied, these are tears of joy. From that point, music became a second shadow for our family. Ms. Pottinger invited and encouraged us to apply for summer music camps, special performances and events, and art schools. With her support, opportunities came flying at us. It was once said by a former Ghanaian president, Dr. Busia, that if you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation. Education through music has provided a meaningful education to us and our family. To us, it feels like the whole world. So on behalf of all ETM students, and from our family in particular, we want to say thank you to Education Through Music for producing music programs for people like me and families like ours. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, is there a dry eye in the house? Thank you to Michelle and Edna O'Kang for so beautifully sharing your story. Over at the Triad Theater, or as it's also known as Stage 72, Tony Award winner Lilius White celebrates her 65th birthday. She'll be there three nights, July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. It's going to be a great night, and she is a dynamite performer. Don't miss it. On July 1st and 2nd, over at Feinstein's 54 Below, Tony nominee Rob McClure, you saw him in Chaplin, Honeymoon in Vegas, Avenue Q, Noise is Off. He's now in Something Rotten. Well, expect some special guests, both people and puppets. Also at Feinstein's 54 Below, John Lloyd Young brings his newest show to the club. John Lloyd Young is the only American actor to date to have received the Tony Award, the Drama Desk Award, the Outer Critics Circle Award, and the Theatre World Award for his Broadway debut. 
He won it for playing Frankie Valley in Jersey Boys, which is still going strong. And back by popular demand at Feinstein's 54 Below are Alice Ripley and Emily Skinner, unattached. They starred as conjoined twins Daisy and Violet in the original Broadway production of Sideshow. And a very, very special night at Feinstein's 54 Below. Barbara Cook will be back at the club again on July 21st and 23rd to celebrate the release of her memoir then and now. The Broadway at Birdland series for one night only on Sunday, July 24th, presents the cast of the Phantom of the Opera singing Stephen Sondheim. It will be hosted by the current Phantom, James Barber. Over at the Metropolitan Room, there are a slew of wonderful shows. On July 5th, international star Adrian Hahn brings her show to the club. She loves the music of the 20s and 30s, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what you're going to hear. On Tuesday, July 12th, Laurie Krause and Daryl Kojak celebrate 25 years of working together. This jazz duo is superb and have won many, many awards. On July 13th, Stephen Hanks presents New York's Greatest Hits. This one is Maureen Taylor. Taylor Made, the music of Bob Merrill. Bob Merrill gave us such wonderful scores as Funny Girl, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and Carnival. Also on July 13th at the Metropolitan Room is Celia Burke. She presents her show, Manhattan Serenade. On Thursday, July 14th, Ruth Carlin presents A Light in the Window, The Songs of Judy Collins. Also on Thursday, July 14th, Award-winning recording star and cabaret artist Stacey Sullivan presents A Night at the Troubadour. On Friday, July 15th, Dora Rubin presents Same Pony, Different Dress. On Sunday, July 17th, the Metropolitan Room presents A Family Night. It's hosted by Jim Brochu and Steve Shacklin. People are asked to bring a dessert or an appetizer to share with everybody who's there. You can share stories, sing a song, it's just a gathering. They'll serve free non-alcoholic beverages, but I'm sure they'll sell you a drink if you want it. On Saturday, July 23rd, Bistro Award winner Jillian Lorraine brings her new show, Romanza. Now just out on CD, Ghost Light Records presents Baccarat Reimagined. This was an incredible show that had played first downtown at the New York Theatre Workshop and then went to London. Kyle Riabko stars singing the catalog of Burt Bacharach and the lyrics of Hal David and others. It's a terrific reimagining. A one and a two and a one and a two and a three and a four, seven. The moment I wake up before I put on my makeup I say a little prayer for you that is, that is why all the boys in town all the boys follow in town. you all around. all around, just like me, they long to be close to you. And we're 
are all the better for each other. Oh, there's more to love, I know. MCC Theatre presents down at the Lucio Lortel, Hallie Pfeffer's newest play, directed by Trip Coleman. A funny thing happened on the way to the gynecological oncology unit at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center of New York City. It features Beth Beers, Lisa Emery, Eric Lochtefeld, and Jacqueline Sidney. I'm Carla. Don. Wow. What? You have a really firm handshake. Oh, I know. It's something my mom always like drilled into us when we were kids. Really? Yeah. She would always be like, a weak handshake is an invitation for someone to fuck you over. <laughs> Whoa. I know. I mean, I think I agree with her, I but I've just never heard it phrased oh, quite that I way. I know. She has a... Well, let's just say some of her parenting methods have been... Unorthodox. My mom used to bring me to her book club and point at the hors d'oeuvres and say, Eat up, because that's your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> if my sister and I refused to eat dinner, my mom would march into the other room and start packing a suitcase. My mom used to put me to sleep by telling me stories about all the men she'd pursued romantically before my dad. <laughs> my mom used to put us to sleep by turning on law and order. No. We found it soothing. You find law and order soothing? Well, now we've graduated to SVU, but yeah. You're not very social. Are you, uh, are you, uh, talking to me? No. I'm talking to your comatose mother. Oh. That was a joke. Okay. Because she's always sleeping. Okay. Because she has cancer. Okay. I can make cancer jokes because I have cancer. Okay. Like how Jews can make Jewish jokes. Okay. Are you Jewish? What? You must be. You're funny. Oh. That was a joke. You're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> to close our show, himself and Nora playing at the Manetta Lane Theater. It's written by Jonathan Brial and it's directed by Michael Bush. And it stars Matt Bogart as James Joyce and Whitney Bashor as Nora Barnacle, a country girl from Galway who is his muse. Here are some scenes from himself and Nora. He's gonna need paper, pencils, pens, and color ink. It never ends. The world to make friends and friends. He'll need some social cachet. Perhaps a suit. A tie. A walking stick. Sure, we, we simply, simply, simply can't, can't ignore. ignore. We're talking Paris. Woo! We're talking Paris. Woo! We're all the fairest. Woo! We're talking Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Bruce. Woo! Hey, Ruth, in Paris. Woo! Woo! We're talking Paris. Woo! Ooh, la la, la dairy. Do la la, la you. What to do, what to do. They're gonna need paper, pencils, pens, and colorings. It never ends. The bounds are made for each and friends. We simply, simply can't ignore. We're going to have to send them all. We're going to have to send them all. All, 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 all. Expenses paid. All expenses paid. Oh, Nora, I love how you splutter about Heaney and how he don't care about the skippies and ditties, the clefts of more hair, and the poor soul inflicted, stinking like dung. Yes, yours are the greatest words I've ever said. 
dance with me. Oh.